Okay. And this is Dennis Moore again. I'm continuing to work on my boat, trying to get ready for vacation that is uh, towards the end of next week. So I'm in kind of a bit of a panic mode here, but I still wanted to share this video with you because I've learned a lot from YouTube. I would not have even tackled this job if it wasn't for YouTube. And I just wanted to give a little back in this video, and, I, and I'm hoping that it, that it helps. Uh, I've got uh, my gimbal bearing is now installed. Uh, um, I got my parts in uh, from a company, uh, uh, in, uh, MarineEngine.com is the one that sent it. I ordered it over the weekend, I over, o overnight. Uh, they overnighted it by UPS. I shipped it out Monday. I got it Tuesday. I put that bearing in. This is Wednesday. I put this bearing in uh, uh, yesterday. I did have some trouble getting the bearing in, and you might recall if you've seen the previous video, I, I had trouble getting the seal in. It's just tight. That's a tight fit. I cleaned it up best I could, and uh, I had a tool that I used to get it in. Couldn't have got it in without that tool, but there was a lot of hammering to get that uh, bearing in place. But I had I had luck. I was uh, got it about four o'clock yesterday, and time I was getting, and then I wanted to chill it down in the freezer. That helps. But uh, because of timelines and wanting to do it before dark, I didn't get to freeze it as long as I wanted. It wound up being froze 40 minutes when I would have liked to have been more than two hours in the freezer. Uh, that's the gimbal bearing. To shrink it a little bit to make it easier to assemble. I cleaned out the housing good uh, uh, with, some carburetor, with some carburetor cleaner. And then I gave it a really light film of grease uh, to help it. And then uh, uh, ha hammered the gimbal bearing in. Here's a tool I use. This is a multi-purpose tool. Uh, this came from a company called uh, MBS. I highly recommend it. Anybody that does any work on, on an uh, outdrive uh, and it, it has an engine alignment or replacing bearings, this is a multi-purpose tool. Uh, need one of these, an engine alignment tool. But I just wanted to show you the use of this tool. I'll show, demonstrate how we're going to align the engine and what we're going to do to how I know it's slightly out, to, uh, how I know it's pretty close, uh, uh, what are we going to do to correct it, and I hope this helps you a bunch. But I just want to show you this tool uh, from MBS. Uh, it's got, uh, uh, here's the old bearing, and uh, you can tell the gimbal bearing. It shouldn't have any play at all. If you, if you hear it, you can actually hear it and move it moves it's about a sixteenth of an inch this is the old bearing uh, um, it's not a seal bearing it's a grease bearing it's got a grease port that you got to line up the new bearing if you see this rubber right here is actually a seal bearing so they changed the design where that's a seal bearing now uh, and if it, it's got no play no motion at all that's a good gimbal brand new gimbal bearing right there and it's a new one uh, my only complaint from a MarineEngine.com is when I ordered Quicksilver, that's the Merc Cruiser parts. Uh, this particular bearing did not come in a Merc Cruiser package. Uh, it was in the box where everything else was Merc Cruiser. Uh, but I can tell by looking at it that it is the same bearing. I can tell it's a good quality bearing. And as far as I know, Quicksilver may be just repackaging this bearing. One of the things Quicksilver does, though, is this little zerk fitting over here that greases that bearing. Now there's a there's a zert fitting here and a port that goes all the way to the bearing that you line that hole up on on this on the older bearing. Uh, they got a little plug there for that zert fitting because you don't need to grease a seal bearing and so then you don't want to be greasing it because the grease can actually cause you some trouble pushing on the bearing uh, uh, and, and high pressures in this housing from the grease. So you want to plug that and uh, I did not get the plug. It would have come with a with a Quicksilver kit, but uh, what I got was, a, a, what I'll, I will plug this or remember not to grease it in the meantime. Uh, that's important. Okay, the seal, the grease seal's in place. Uh, while you have a grease seal with a seal bearing, I'm not 100% sure, but I can think of a couple of reasons why you still might want it here. Uh, one, in the engine compartment, uh, it grease and grime in there, and it will prevent that from getting to your bearing. Uh, and the shaft, so it'll keep uh, some bad engine stuff out of there, uh, which shouldn't be much, but still it will keep that. And another thing, uh, uh, the reason I'm replacing all this, besides having a bad gimbal bearing, is I, I, I had a, uh, a uh, this is a bellows, this is a, a gimbal bellows that, that, that goes up on top of that, and it actually failed. And when it failed, it leaked water into the boat. So uh, 
uh, we, me and my son-in-law had a lot of water get into the boat and that's what got me working on this and we knew that hey we we had some work to do to get it ready for vacation so anyway that will let water into your boat uh, that grease seal will slow that water going down into the boat it won't prevent it in front of the seal there's like a quarter inch uh, slide or something that I guess lets excessive grease and stuff out of it it would let water out too into the hull but it's uh, it's slow and if you had it filled with grease good to be tougher for the water to get out of there but those are two reasons I can think of uh, still having that grease seal on there and there may be others so I wanted to let you know that okay demonstration of this tool I just want to show you this is a multi-purpose MBS tool I used it to install the bearing uh, this came uh, uh, with the kit I had to drill this hole and it's tough drilling a hole on a bar so you need a drill press and a V block and you need some sophisticated tool to drill that hole for for that the bolt to hold it on there but th this is the tool that's, that's bolted on here and it fits up with this bearing nicely to to uh, install it and I happen to have it backwards I happen to know these this goes backwards there's a, there's a mark in the front that tells you what the front is you can see on that particular bearing I got it in the front but anyway this this bolts on here and uh, it tells you when you got the bearing uh, in place so you can tell and I had to hit it pretty hard that wasn't there yesterday so it uh, I hit that bar pretty hard I started with wood and then I changed to a hammer so I had trouble getting that bearing in but it's but it's in there and we got the tool okay so first thing I did uh, before that bearing was in I put the seal in here's the little seal tool that fits on here if that puts that grease seal in there and puts it right and hard I had trouble getting in there too but I didn't have to hammer like yesterday so put the grease seal in next was the bearing so this, this put the bearing in and this this tool will also put the uh, keeper little keeper I call it for uh, for the, for the bellows. we got that sitting around here somewhere. Here it is. Okay, here's the new bellows that I'll be putting on. And I just wanted to show this little, this, this uh, hose clamp mounts up to that gimbal area there. And, and this will go to the bell housing. And this particular ring will, will go in here. And this ridge that's on here will, will go into a little groove that's on the bell housing. And this, this little keeper gets hammered into place to push that ridge and keep it in, in that groove. And this tool right here is for putting it in with this, with this tool. So a multi-purpose tool and a good tool. But today, we're going to be doing engine alignment. I got my neighbor here who's helping me, uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, 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 he's, he's like my fourth choice, I think, now, because my son-in-law was working because I didn't get the parts in in time. He works during the week and gone all week. He would normally help help me. This is 2020 in the year of COVID, and uh, uh, my son and grandson just tested positive for COVID uh, uh, this past weekend. So we, he, he, he was going to come help me with this, and I had to turn to my neighbor, but he runs his cows on my place, and so I didn't feel guilty asking him to help. So anyway, that's Brian Davis, and he happens to be video on this. Uh, uh, but I, he's going to help me. You need two people to do this job one to check the alignment and then one to make the adjustments in the engine uh, uh brian will be doing checking the alignment i'll check it and show him how, to, how this is done and and we'll video that and then i'll be making the adjustments in there you want to keep up with uh how you're adjusting the engine so you can undo it if that's necessary it looks like to me just the visual that the uh, uh engine is uh, uh um, a little bit too high in the back uh, uh, and that needs to be adjusted and you adjust it from the front so it's the reverse of what you may be thinking and you have to be careful about that okay <clears throat> that's the first thing we're going to do we got a pretty clean tool and we are going to insert it into that gimbal bearing and and and, and all the way into the engine that's got no grease on it at this time all right this might let me move my by the way, this is a 80 pound test uh, braid, braided fishing line, and it works great for uh, uh, pulling your lines or, or keeping up with where your lines. Right now I've got this one as my uh, gear shifter cable, and so I know how to pull that gear shifter cable back through and route it through the engine to go where it needs to go. 
So right now it's a little bit in the way. All right. So I will get it out of the way, more or less. All right. And now we're going to insert this into the engine, into the gimbal bearing first. All right. It's into into the gear bearing. I can feel it begin to touch. It just should go in easy. You shouldn't have to push. You shouldn't have to push with your hand like I'm having to now. What? A lot of force. Okay, I got it in. You hear the you hear the bang that it hit in the back. It hit the back of the engine coupler. So that tells me one thing: we're not way off. Because if it was way off, it would not have hit the back of the engine coupler. So we, that means we're close. Plus, looking down through the hole, I could see the splines all the way around. So they, they didn't look. The coupler looked like it was a little bit high, uh, uh, but uh, it should be easier than that to get in. Shouldn't have to push real hard. Should be easy to get in. Plus, it should be easy to turn. You ought to be able to turn this with two fingers. Now, I can turn it, so that also tells me that it's close, but it, it should have been easier than that to go in, all right? So, the two-finger test, both ways. I got a line on here just to tell me what's what's up, or that's, that line should be up, all right? And it should come out easy. A little bit of, uh, and it should come out easier than that, all right? Now, we're going to tell what we need to do. And we're going to do that by a little bit of grease on the end of this. This goes up into the engine coupler and we'll contact splines. And we'll get witness marks from that spline on the grease that we're getting ready to put on here. So what we're going to do is uh, a little bit of grease on the finger. You need probably, oh, I'm guessing this is a light coating, something like a, somewhere between a, 32nd or 16th of an inch of grease, but but you need it all the way around To get a good marking of the spines Okay And that looks pretty good to me and it helps if there's a good color in your grease This happens to be a red grease so it shows up really well I'm gonna just do the same thing again put it back in there this time. I'm not gonna turn it I'm gonna just put it back in and do the best I can to pull it straight out Okay, it's in. Okay, it went on in. I'm gonna do the best I can to pull it straight out. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, now you can tell, looking at the bottom of this. See, I had it where this was the top, so I can tell what's top and what's bottom. And looking at the bottom of this, that the spline marks go all the way through the grease and scrape most of the grease off. So we got high contact on the bottom. All right, but the top, uh, I know we're close to alignment because we do have spline marks. But we got, and the spline marks go almost all the way. But the spline marks are not going all the way through the grease. So they're not scraping up as much grease. So this is telling us that uh, the, the bottom is, the back of the engine is too high. Now let me explain something as we adjust this engine. The engine is sitting on motor mounts, two sets of motor mounts. Okay, my arm here represents the engine with my hand being the coupler. All right, there's two sets of mounts the aft engine, the aft mounts, which are basically fixed for this particular job. If you're close, you don't want to mess with those. If you change out the transom or the engine or something major, the flooring, something that really throws stuff off, then you got to adjust them too. Otherwise, you're only working with the front ones. But this mount is behind the, uh, the, 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 the gimbal. Behind the the, uh, the engine coupler, okay, uh, and then you so uh, if you if you imagine if you are too high in the back, which is what this just indicated, okay, if you're too high in the back, what you want to do is raise the front of the engine, okay, so it's backwards. So if we the, the front coupler is here, we're gonna raise the front of the engine to lower it and get things in shape, and we're getting ready to do that. Okay, go ahead and pause it, Brian.